Now, obviously, I've only just introduced this topic at this point. So there's a lot more for us to discuss on each one of these issues, which I would like to do as we go. But is everyone starting to get the understanding that we can talk about the truth and we can think we know the truth, we can think we are doing the truth and we can think that we're doing the right thing and at the same time be in complete error on all of those subjects. And not understand that in our soul is where the transformation needs to occur. Divine love, when it enters our soul, will naturally make that transformation. All we've got to do is allow the love to enter us and the transformation will begin. How do we allow the love to enter us? By being open and having a longing for the truth, which is the thing that opens our soul to love entering us, and being humble because that's the thing that allows the error to leave us so that the truth can enter us. Can you see? There's just a few basic things there that we keep forgetting in our day-to-day -day life. So what many of us are trying to do is we're trying to receive God's love without being humble. Or for most of us, we're trying to receive God's love without having a desire for truth or without being humble. That's what we're trying to do. And it's a physical impossibility to do such things. You might as well just give up the path right now if you're going to continue doing that because it's a physical impossibility for love to enter and transform your soul without you having a longing for truth and without your humility. Can you see? Can you see what we're doing is we're often desiring God's love. We come along to these sessions, we're thinking about God's love and we're noticing in our lives we keep doing the same pattern of things but we don't, and we feel all confused about it and distressed about it, and we feel like, oh, this is not getting me anywhere, and all those kind of things. But we're not coming face to the face with two facts. And that is, I'm just not being humble, and I just don't want the truth. And that's why it isn't working. Can you see? We're, we're, just, we're just off base when it comes to acknowledging the basic principles of the way that's what we're doing so what, what we need to do is to start allowing ourselves even intellectually at this point to analyse what's going on do you want to spend another three or five years or however long you've known about the divine love path before you make the actual opening of the gate into the narrow way well, I don't know about you, but I would think that's a bit of a waste of my time. Right? What we would like to do is actually make the physical transformation into the gate that leads on the narrow path, the way that leads to God. Even though it seems to be narrow and cramped, we still want to get on that path. Now, to get on that path, all three things must be engaged. Now, you don't have to worry about the transformation of your soul because God's love will do it for you. <laughs> do you understand? You don't have to force yourself to change because God's love will change you. You do need to allow the change to occur using your will. You do need to allow humility and truth to become a part of your being before these transformations will occur. Because love cannot enter you without these other things. So we need to go back to this basic understanding that I presented earlier, and that is God's love transforms the soul. You do not have to do it for yourself. Because God's love will do it for you. So that's number one. God's love will transform your soul. It's a guaranteed fact that God's love will transform your soul. There are billions of spirits in the celestial kingdom who know that for a fact because their own soul has been transformed by that love. Right? 
You do not have to worry about your soul being transformed. You do not have to try to transform your own soul. You don't have to make your own soul transformation yourself. Have I made that point clear? Okay. However, you do need to ha have an opening for the love to enter in order for the transformation to take place. Can you see the difference? There needs to be an opening inside of yourself that allows the love to transform your soul. You don't have to try to transform your soul. You just need to allow the love to do its work. Now, how do I allow the love to do its work? By being desirous of truth inside of my soul having a passionate desire in my heart to actually be in truth. And once I'm in that space, and I'm also in this other space of being completely humble to all the error that's in me, so the error can just flow out naturally. As the error is flowing out naturally, I am now, because I'm open to truth and I understand the truth will open my soul, my soul now is automatically open and there's space in it in order for the love to flow. And the love will transform me. As long as I can receive it, the love will transform me. You see, what a lot of us have been doing, even though I've presented these truths to you before, a lot of us have yet to understand them. Can you see? Like, we think we're understanding them. We think, this is what I'm trying to do. Right? But we're not understanding that you do not have to try to transform your own soul. You don't have to do that. What we need to do instead is to allow the soul to be transformed. Which is a process of being open to truth, which opens our soul, and being humble to our emotions, which allows all the negative crap, all the error, to just leave us naturally. We don't have to try to do it. It will happen naturally if we're completely open and humble. So, many of us have been doing the opposite, haven't we? Can you see that? Who, who thinks they've been doing the opposite of that? Yeah, quite a few of you. So, because what we've been doing is we're trying to receive God's love and we're trying to make our soul different so God's love will enter us. Right? God's love transforms the soul. You don't need to try to make things different. And to be honest with you, it's impossible for you to actually make things different without the reception of the that's transforming power of God's love. So, but what you need to do is be open to its reception. There has to be an openness inside of your own soul to receiving the truth. And to allowing these negative emotions that we've picked up along our path, along our way, to leave us so there's space for love to enter us. So if you just continue, remember I've drawn this little diagram and I'll draw it up the top again. It's like a, we're like a bottle, it upended if you like, but we're like a bottle. So I'll just draw a bottle. There's the bottle of our soul. At the moment, for many of us, we have all this emotional experience filled to the very brim. Right? And then for many of us, we also have a very firm cap or cork on the top of that brim because we don't want to let any of it ever out. And then we're longing for divine love. And God's trying to pour the love on this closed bottle that's already full of other things. And then we're going, I've been doing this now for two years and nothing's happened. There's been not very many substantial changes in my life. 
you know, I still have as much problem with my relationship as I had two years ago and I still have much problem with my friendships as I did then. I still have as much problem with money as I did then. I still have as much problem with uh, happiness as I did then. I still have as much problem creating what I want to create. I still get pretty annoyed and angry every time and frustrated all the time when I don't get what I want. All of the same things that used to happen, happened. Still happening. And then I go... There must be something wrong with this path. <laughs> there must be something wrong with what I'm hearing. It's, it sounds all right, but there must be something wrong. So we leave it for a while and nothing else out there satisfies us. So we come back to it and then we leave it and we come back to it. And over a period of a few years, we might leave it and come back to it many times. Like sometimes we feel convinced, sometimes we don't and so forth. And you know, the problem is... Our humility has placed this cap on top of our crap that we don't want to, because we're not humble to experiencing it, we can't release it. And if there's no space in the bottle, so there's not any space in the bottle, there must be some of this has to be cleared out in the bottle for something to be poured in. And if there's no space in the bottle, the law of physics, and there are laws of physics governing the operation of your soul, the law of physics prevents the love from entering, or anything else for that matter, for entering. And our soul doesn't have the capacity to expand either, to transform as a result. The, the love entering our soul is like transforming that bottle into an elasticised container that the more you pour in just the bigger it gets right? and that's the effect that the love has on the structure of the soul even but we don't bear we don't even worry about any of that because nothing of the love has entered us for even to have experienced that particular shift so what can we do about that well, the first thing we need to do, and I want to summarise this again for you so that it's nice and solid, at least in that regurgitating machine you've got going up there, is that God's love transforms your soul. You do not have to transform your own soul. Number one. You just need to be open to God's love entering it. Now, the two things that determine your openness to God's love entering your soul is, number one, your desire and longing for truth. There is this physical, mechanical thing that happens to your soul when you desire truth, in that your soul starts opening. Your heart starts opening to the absorption of love as a result of the, open, of the openness. The truth is the thing that opens your soul. It makes you more aware of your environment and your life and everything that's going on in it. That's the effect of the truth. It opens you to your true condition and nature. It opens you even to acknowledging the truth of the different emotions that exist within you, of the errors that were pounded into you via your environment. It opens you to that. Does that make sense? Now, it's okay if our soul's open, but it's, if it's full of crap, something has to happen. Now, when it's open and tipped over, it will automatically flow out if we are humble. If we have this desire and passion to actually feel every single belief and emotion that exists within us, rather than just intellectualise everything. If we allow that, no matter what our environment says to do, and no matter what anybody else feels about us doing that. From that moment on, we have a chance. And in fact, if we allow that condition permanently, we will permanently continue to receive divine love, even if it's only at a dribble. <laughs> but what happens is we ebb and flow. Sometimes we get to a big truth and we go, wow, that's just pretty hard for me to accept. 
So I don't accept it for a while. Now, of course, my soul is now closed to receiving more of the transformational love from God. So from that moment onwards, I am not going to transform. Now, if I keep that closed for six months, then six months later, I'll look back on the last six months and I'll go, yep, I certainly have not changed on that particular issue. Right? And if I keep it closed for five years, then it will be five years. And if I keep it closed for a thousand years, it will be a thousand years. Simple as that. When I choose to have the opening to the truth, now I have the ability for the love to flow again. Right? Now I have the ability for the love to flow, but if there is error-based emotion inside of me or a belief system that is totally opposite to what that truth is saying inside of me, I'm going to have to allow myself to experience some pain in its release. I'm going to need to allow myself to feel the release of that pain rather than just go, yeah, I've got a lot of pain about how my mum treated me or my dad treated me or, or this situation or that situation here and talking about it here without feeling it here. So this is one of the problems we face. We can talk about crap until as the saying is, the cows come home until evening and we go to sleep and we wake up in the morning and we can open our mouth and talk more about the same crap. But until the, we are actually open our heart in humility and open our heart to the truth, in our heart, not in our head, nothing can be transformed. Nothing. This is the reason why most Christian faiths experience a very short transformational period. Any person who enters that faith enters a very short transformational period in their soul and then the instant a truth comes up that they do not wish to accept, they close their soul, no more transformation is going to take place and they'll be stagnant for the rest of their life or potentially existence if they don't make a change. Billions of people in the spirit world in that condition. There are billions in the sixth dimension of the spirit world in that condition. Not wanting to accept one particular truth and so therefore completely closed to further change. Unable to progress beyond that point. They believe themselves to be happy when the comparison of happiness between the eighth and the sixth dimension is thousands of times better in the eighth than the sixth. But they won't even accept that because they do not want to be open to the truth. Yeah. Matt, if we just. <clears throat> I'm, I'm not sure if I'll be able to say this right, but um, how do people, like when you were saying before that, like, I don't have to change my own soul. How do people go with like the resistance to feeling like we don't like God loves us so much that she'll actually do that for us? Well, that that is an emotion yeah. or a belief, right? So, so I need to be humble to that belief and feel it. Okay. So, so for example, if I do not believe that God will make the transformation or give me any love, then I need to feel that. I need to have a good cry about the fact that I believe that God will not give me any love. That's a part of being humble. Once I release that pain, this yeah. belief that I have that God will not love me because of I'm no good and for some reason I'm worse than any other person on the planet and that's why God won't do it. Once I relief, release those beliefs or, or I believe there's no such thing as God, that might be a belief, so I need to release that belief. Once I release the belief emotionally, now it will automatically flow. If I have a longing for it, it will yeah. flow yeah. automatically. Exactly. Does that make sense? So, so it, you can see, can't you, that a core part of the principles of divine truth are humility and the truth itself. <laughs> the love will flow and transform automatically when we have humility and a desire for truth. This is why it's the truth that sets you free. Right? 
because the truth is what allows the love to enter and if you're humble about it it will enter but it requires deep humility in order for that to occur 